Hello, let's learn how to make realistic paintings of cats and dogs. Painting pet portraits is actually what I do as my main job, so I'm really excited about this lesson and I'm super excited to teach my techniques to you. And here's another one that I just finished yesterday. And for this little art lesson, I will be painting my cat Abraham. So if you want to follow along with me or if you want to save this video for later, maybe you want to paint your own cat or dog or horse or rabbit or whatever pet you have. Here is the supplies that you will need for this lesson. The first thing that you will need for this art lesson is a printed out photo of your pet to the exact size of your canvas or a photo of your pet on a device cropped to the size of your canvas. Next, you will need your canvas or a piece of paper or whatever material that you would like to draw or paint on. You will need a ruler, a pencil for sketching, and paints and a paintbrush. The first thing that I want to touch on as the foundation for our portraits is the sketch. And for this realistic technique, you will need a photo of your pet. And you can either print out your picture, like I have right here of my cat Abraham, or if you have an iPad or if you have access to an iPad, this would be a very useful tool as well, as long as you have a picture of your pet that you can reference during your portrait. So because I will be using an eight by 10 inch canvas for my painting, I printed out my photo of Abraham eight by 10 inches. So the size of my photo that I printed out and the size of my canvas are exactly the same. Or if you're working from a photo on a device like an iPad, make sure you crop your photo to the exact size of your canvas or your paper. So before you start your actual sketch on the canvas or piece of paper, you are going to want to grid your photo. So if you have a printed out photo like I do, this is what it should look like once you grid it into square inches. And it's really easy to do this with a ruler. So again, my picture is printed out as an eight by 10 image. Again, the same size as my canvas. And that's just gonna make it so easy if your photo is the same size as your canvas or paper. So since my photo is eight by 10 inches, I measured 10 inches on the long side and I made a little notch for every inch. So there's 10 notches. And then I measured eight inches on the short side and made a little notch for every inch. And I did that for all four sides. Once all four sides had a notch for every inch, I connected them using my ruler. So I connected this notch up here with this notch down here and so on. And then we also do the same thing for the other side. So I have an eight by 10 grid over my photo. And if you are using a device for your photo, you can add a grid to your picture using an app. The app that I use to do this is free and it's right here, it's called Grid and it has a little hashtag at the end. So if I go into my app, I already pulled up my picture and it puts an eight by 10 grid over the picture for you. And now that we have our gridded photo, now it's time to grid your canvas or paper. And since my photo has an eight by 10 grid, I'm going to grid my canvas with an eight by 10 grid, which is going to be super easy because my canvas is already eight by 10 inches. So again, I'm going to take my ruler, mark every inch on every side of the canvas, and then connect them with the ruler to make an eight by 10 grid on the canvas. And this is how it should look once you've completed your eight by 10 grid. So now the grid on my canvas matches the grid on the photo that I printed out of my cat. And this will make drawing out the sketch so much easier. You're basically going to use the lines on your drawing as a guideline to draw your cat or your dog on your canvas or piece of paper. And by using your grid, you can take your time by drawing your pet using the guidelines and once you're done with your sketch you should have pretty accurate proportions by the end of it but at the same time it does not have to be perfect and if you want to just use your guidelines as a rough guide and you don't want to follow it completely that's totally cool too so next time you see my canvas in about a couple seconds it'll have my cat drawn on it and then we will start painting together and your sketch might even take you a couple days and if it does make sure to come back to this video and paint it with me so let's get started so here I am in a time-lapse video of myself sketching out my portrait of Abraham. So as you can see, I'm just following along 
the squares on my printed out photo of Abraham and copying what I see using the squares on my canvas. And I basically just keep doing this until I have a sketch that I am happy with. And your sketch can be as detailed as you would like it, or maybe you just wanna draw out the very basic shapes and go from there. And once we finish our sketches, we'll pretty much just paint our picture in like a coloring book. And now it's time to make a background color, so you can use any color you want, but I am going to make a green shade because my cat just looks really good in green because his eyes are kind of green, so that's why I mixed this color. So after I mix it up, I'm going to paint it all over the background, and this may take two or three coats of paint, so if this takes you a really long time to do, don't worry because in reality this whole painting took me about a few hours. So if it takes you a few hours or a few days, or even if you want to do it little by little every day for a week or two, it may take a really long time, but it's a really fun project. So as I finish up painting my background and making it look super smooth and clean and precise, I'm actually going to take the same shade of green and mix some other shades of greens and yellow to paint the eyes. And these eyes took me a really long time, so I unfortunately didn't get to record me painting the whole thing, but literally just put a bunch of colors on there, mix them all up until they look good to you, and then you have your eyes. At that point, you can start painting in the fur, and you basically just do this again like you're coloring a coloring page or a coloring book. Just take any of the colors that you have for your pet and just paint them right on the canvas, right where you see them on your photo. The way I usually like to paint is I'll sometimes start with the darkest tones and then I'll go to the middle tones and then end with the lightest highlights of the fur. And as you can see, my first layer here is very sketchy. It obviously does not look like the final product yet. We still have a long way to go. But my only objective at this point is basically to put paint all over the canvas and cover up everything with paint, even if it's very light and sketchy at this point, which mine is. And then after some layers and after some time and you keep adding more colors to the canvas, eventually your layers start building up and you start to get more texture and more realism in your painting. Also, don't be afraid to put some funky colors in your fur. For me, I actually took some of my background color, that green, and put some in the fur because I thought it looked kind of fun and cool. And I actually really liked the way that it turned out in the end using some greens in the fur, even though my cat is orange and he's not green at all. Another piece of advice I have for painting fur is to let your brush do most of the work for the texture. I like to use a flicking motion with my hand and my wrist in order to get my paintbrush to make fur-like strokes when I'm putting the paint on the canvas. So as you can see, that's kind of what I'm doing here as I'm just touching up some of the most orangest, darkest spots on my painting. And as you can see a little bit later on, which I will begin shortly, is I'm actually going to switch to a light blue and use that for the lightest parts of my cat's fur. So that would be around the eyes and around the ears and he has a little bit of white near his chin. So instead of using a pure white or instead of using a light orange, I used a light blue. And it might sound really silly to think about that since in real life my cat does not have blue fur, but in art, using colors in creative ways like this can really bring a sense of vibrancy to your paintings and make it super artistic. So that is why I chose to use some cool colors like greens and blues in my cat's fur. So you may choose to do that too. 
And as my painting is coming to an end, I am almost done. I'm just working on some final finishing touches like the final highlights and the whiskers and the little fuzzies in Abraham's ears. I would like to just remind you one more time that my next subscriber goal is 1,000. So if you wanna help us get there, I would really love if you would subscribe to our channel so that we can hit 1,000 subscribers. And also, if you were wondering why my papers keep moving around and why I had rocks on my paper earlier, it's because I did this painting outside and it was really windy, so my stuff was trying to blow around a little bit, but painting outside is so fun and I love to do it, so even though it was windy, I had a great time painting outside for this project. So I would really love if you painted your pets with me, and if you do, I would love to see it. My social media and my email address is in the description. Also, since this video is for kids, and it's made for kids, YouTube automatically disables the comments, so if you have any comments or any feedback, feel free to email me as well. So with that, please enjoy these last two or three minutes of myself painting the finishing touches on Abraham's painting. And again, if you wanna come back to this video and paint with me, that would be so awesome. Or if you wanna share it with your friends, that would be super awesome as well. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. See you next time. Thank you so much for learning with me and creating with me. See you next time.